Hi guys, in this video we're going to use Google Sheets to work the same problem that we were trying to understand conceptually in the previous tutorial videos. Uh, we're going to work with the same data and it's the same setup. So let me just remind you what this data was about. These are the house prices. These are how much the houses sold for in thousands. And these are the square footages of the houses. So this particular house, for example, sold for $312,000. And it was 1,600 square feet. And you can count here and see that we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 houses. So we have a sample of 10 houses. This is bivariate numerical data. It's two variables measured on each observation. In this case, each of these observations is a house that was sold. And furthermore, it's bivariate numerical data. Okay, so first thing I would want to do, and we've discussed this already, is to create a scatter plot. All right, so we can see whether there is some kind of meaningful relationship going on between these two variables. Now, let me add, uh, and this is something we discussed at length in the previous tutorial, that this particular scenario, we want to be able to predict how much a house is going to sell for based on how many square feet the house has. <clears throat> okay, basically how big the house is. So the variable that we want to predict is clearly the house price. So we give it the distinction of calling it the y variable. And square footage becomes the predictor or the independent variable, and it gets the label x. Okay? <clears throat> We could also actually write this in. So just for ourselves so we don't forget, this square footage is our x variable. Remember this in simple linear regression, this is the independent explanatory predictor variable. And y is our is the variable we want to predict. That in simple regre in, in regression is called the response variable the dependent variable and sometimes even called the outcome variable. Okay, so remember that it is important for us to make a distinction between x and y in regression. The variable we want to predict is the y variable. Okay, so uh, now that we understand that, we can move forward. So the first thing I would want to do if I have this kind of data and I have this kind of objective is to create a scatter plot. I want a chart that is going to give me a visual on um, maybe expose some of the relationships that's harder to see when I'm just looking at a column of, of data. Okay, so to do this, we're going to create a scatter plot. And to set up a scatter plot in Google Sheets to make it as easy as possible, put the x variable in the first column and the y in the second. So we have to manipulate this guy a little bit. You might not have to based on what your data looks like, but if your data has the y variable first, cut and paste around and get the y on the right side. This makes the job a lot easier. So once you have your x variable properly understood and properly placed in the first column and your y variable next to it on its right, you can highlight them Okay, and then go to insert chart <clears throat> and go to chart types scroll down until you get to scatter click scatter and you'll see we get a scatter plot here that looks similar to the scatter plots that we were seeing in the previous tutorial videos uh, using this example uh, one thing I'd like to do is I don't need this legend over here, so I'm going to uncheck this guy. Okay, get rid, gets rid of it, but it keeps the dot there, and that's a little problematic. We're going to fix that in a second. Go over to customization, and here let's, re let's give a proper title here. This is house price in thousands. That's important to indicate. Versus 
that's the y variable, versus square footage or square feet. Okay, that's a good title. Y versus X. That's a good way to title. Legend, let's get rid of that legend. So we'll go none. So I went to legend and selected none. This guy disappeared, thankfully. Now we'll scroll down. Let's title our axes, our horizontal. Obviously, we have the X variable on the horizontal axis. We want that. If we don't, there's a problem. We need to fix that. Uh, on the vertical axis, we have house price. And again, that's in thousands. It's a good idea to indicate that. All right. All right, and that should be all we need. We can scroll down. There are some other options here, but this is enough. Okay. Let me make this a little smaller and pull it over. Okay. Clearly, we're starting to see that there is a positive relationship between square footage and house price. As square footage increases, house price is also increasing. Right? There is a positive relationship. Furthermore, that relationship does not look curved. It is quite linear. And if I were to just draw a line from my intuition, that's kind of that line kind of summarizes this pattern that I'm noticing. Okay? So for now we'll leave it at that. One thing to also what we can calculate right after the scatter plot, once we've realized that there is something meaningful going on here and it's a linear relationship, we might want to calculate the correlation coefficient. So remember that was R, the symbol for correlation coefficient, and the formula to calculate that is coral. You're going to highlight the x values, comma, highlight the y values, hit enter. And I promised you that the correlation coefficient doesn't care which variable you called x and which you called y. So let's do it reverse, just so we see we get the same exact value. So I'm highlighting y this time first, and then x. And we see that we get the same exact value. All right? So that proves to us that what we learned earlier that the correlation coefficient does not care which variable you call the x and which you call the y. All right? So let's look at this value. 0.76. Let's get rid of a few decimal places. It's a little too much. 0.762. Well, that's positive. So that agrees with the direction of this relationship. It's also quite large in magnitude, meaning very close. It's closer to 1, definitely, than it is to 0. So it's, this is indicating a moderate to strong relationship. Okay, So the sign is positive, and the strength is uh, given to us by how large it is. Remember, r goes from negative 1 to 1. All right, so between the scatter plot and the correlation coefficient, the story is starting to unfold. We're exploring whether there's a relationship between these two variables, and we're clearly seeing that there is something interesting going on. We all kind of suspected this because we know a little bit about um, how houses, house prices behave and how square footage is related to it. But sometimes you don't know anything about the variables that you're studying, and you have to explore and it might be quite a revelation to see these values. Okay? All right. So, what this tells me now is that hey, it's worth it to keep moving on. Maybe what I'd like to do is to actually get an explicit relationship, not just to say there's a positive relationship, but actually get the form of this relationship in the form of an equation. So, we're talking about y hat equals b0 plus b1 times x. Remember, this was our least squares regression line. This was a, this is a line. This is the y-intercept, and this is the slope. We re, we've reviewed this. This is the line that gets as close as possible to these points and best fits them. We went through 
that method of least squares and the explanation using those brackets in the previous tutorial. And we saw that the line that quote unquote best fits a series of points in a scatter plot is the line that gets as close as possible to those points by minimizing the residuals, the squared residuals, specifically the sum of the squared residuals, RSS. Okay? If you miss that, you gotta go back and watch that tutorial. Our goal here is to actually get the values for the regression coefficients, B0 and B1. So we have numbers here instead of just these placeholders. Okay, so to do this, we let Excel Miner do the heavy lifting. So we go to Add ons, Excel Miner, Start. <clears throat> so our goal here is to get this uh, regression line. So we go down till we find regression. Here we are, linear regression, not logistic. Let's click on this. It asks us for our Y variable. We highlight it. Be careful, don't highlight the letter Y if you've done what I've done here. That was purely, this row is purely for myself. I highlight my X variable. I have the labels in the first row, so I check labels. I leave the rest of these items as is. I just select an output range and I'm going to throw it somewhere where it, there's nothing beneath it. So I'm putting it down here. And then I can click OK and I'll get all the output I need. OK, so let's take a look at this output. We could close this because we're done with this. Excel Miner has done its job. I'm going to scroll down and take a look at some of these values. First, let me use the highlighter to highlight the important items that we're going to talk about here. Here are the coefficients, by the way. There's B0, and there's B1. Um, and there are some other important items we have not discussed yet, so let me highlight them all. We're going to spend the rest of the time talking about them. Okay. Oop. Wrong move. Okay, you could go ahead and highlight these values for yourself once you have an example in front of you because these are the ones that these are the values that are important to us and that we're going to discuss. Okay, so also by the way, this is not um, terribly important, but it's something you already could recognize. All right, all right, so let's go straight to the coefficients, and I recommend that you go straight to them. We already know what these guys are. Here is B0, and here is B1. So notice the row intercept is the row that has B0, because B0 is our intercept. The row with the X variable has the slope for square footage. So if I could put this all together, I would write Y, let me do hat, equals B0 plus B1 times X. Let me fill in the blanks here. So what's Y? Well, house price. Or let me just abbreviate by just writing price. Now if I just leave price, I'm telling, I'm conveying that this equation is going to actually give me the price. But remember, this is a predicted price. The line doesn't actually touch those points. So this is, we put a hat on it to indicate that that's, this equation is going to be a prediction equation, not a determining equation. So predicted price, so I put a hat on price, equals 98, let's just round to two decimal places here so we don't have to type this whole thing out. B0 is 98.25 if I round to two, plus, because the sign of B1 is positive, so plus, and then 0 0.11 if I round to two decimal places, times, let me just put that in parentheses, square foot. Let me abbreviate square feet. OK, 
Okay, here is our regression equation. We let Excel do all the work, we did all the understanding, and we just pulled out the coefficients and put them together correctly. So what this equation is telling us is, you can predict the price of, an, of a house by simply plugging in how many square feet that house has, and then out of this side will come a number, and that number is the predicted, that's why the hat is there, price, okay? All right, great, so that's the first thing we do. Now, we before we jump in and start using this equation to start making predictions, so for example, before I start plugging in square feet numbers into here and getting a, a predicted price, I, one thing I want to do is I want to assess my regression model. I want to see how well this line is doing at predicting the price. So let's come back to the scatter plot. So this line, I'm not going to draw it exactly. That's going to be one of our, our steps. Actually, you know what? We should add this line right now. It would be a good um, tool to understand. So click on your chart. We're going to update this chart. Right click, go to advanced settings or advanced edit. If you scroll, if you're in the customization tab already, scroll all the way down and you'll see trend. So we're going to add linear trend. Okay, so click linear trend. And you see it adds a straight line and that line looks pretty nicely fit to those points. That actually, the way Google Sheets determines this line is how we just did with that regression output. That is the best fit line. Okay, so this is a visual representation of what we pulled out here and put together here. Okay? So all of these points that we see, these 10 points, one, of the, one point per observation in our data set, those are the, if I go over, that's the actual price for this house that had this much square feet. But what's the difference between the actual price and the predicted price? Well, I go up the same square footage and I don't go all the way to the point. I stop at the line and then I go over. This, whatever this number is, a little more than 250, is the predicted price for a house with this much square feet. Okay? Whereas this, if I kept going to the point, this is the actual price. So this is y and this is y hat. Okay? We need to distinguish those two things. Okay? All these points on this line are the predicted y's. In this case, y is house price. The points are the actual houses that sold. Okay? So we need to separate those two. All right, now what we need to do is we want to assess our line. And we want to assess this line. How well is this line doing at predicting the points? Because we're, our, our goal in all this is to come up with a line, uh, an equation that we could use to make predictions for new houses. So for example, a new house comes on the market in this neighborhood, and the house has obviously hasn't been sold yet. And the house is, let's say, 1,650 square feet. And let's say I'm the broker. I want to come up with a good price to list the house for um, that's going to sell uh, and make the buyer happy. So I could just take a guess. I could take a qualitative guess. But I could use what I learned by this from this line and make a, pr a nice prediction here using my equation. Okay, I can plug in 1650 here and I'll get a predicted price. But before I do that, before I do that, I want to make sure that my regression equation is doing a good job at explaining my data. So we have a couple tools for doing these assessments and I'm going to leave those to the next video. So we're going to continue right where here where we left off in the in the following video.